Hi, I'm Mark Lauchs, Extension Weed Scientist at The Ohio State University. I'm standing on one of our research plots at the OARDC Western Ag Research Station where we're looking at control of mare's tail. This is a repeat of a study we did in 2012, and the goal of this is to look at uh, the residual activity that we get from various pre-emergence herbicides that have activity on uh, mare's tail. So that's Valor, Authority, or Spartan, Valor XLT, and Metribuzin. And one of the goals of this is, you know, we know we have a lot of mare's tail populations that are ALS resistant. So in the premixes like Valor XLT and Authority XL and products like that, the ALS component, whether it's classic or first rate, falls out in a lot of our populations in terms of providing any residual control. And so when that happens, uh, the control really falls back on the premix component. So that'd be Valor in some of those premixes or Authority in some of those mixes, or if you're using Canopy DF, it'd just be the Metribuzin. Um, so what we did out here was we have Valor XLT versus just Valor versus just Authority or Spartan, sulfentrosome by itself versus Metribuzin by itself. We have a couple of different rates of each, and then we have them applied at various intervals. So we have uh, a 30-day pre-plant that went on the beginning of April. Um, we have a seven-day before planting that went on uh, towards the end of April. We have a couple at-plant treatments, um, and then we have a split. One of the things we've talked about in the corn newsletter and in some winter meetings is um, where you can't do a fall application and you come in in the spring, maybe doing a, an early spring burn down plus a little bit of residual and then coming back with a rest of your residual when you finally plant. So we have that approach out here too. So we're sort of getting a measure of the relative effectiveness of these herbicides and then maybe how they're best used. And as we walk through here, you will see some differences in burn down and also some differences in residual. And one of the things we know, of course, is if you have not done a fall application and you come in in spring, generally an earlier spring application, um, it's easier to burn down mare's tail. They're pretty small. That tends to put more stress on your residual herbicides. Remember that mare's tail is going to emerge in late May and June. And so if you put herbicides on, residual herbicides on early April, you know, you can run out of herbicide. The disadvantage, of course, of waiting if you haven't done anything in the fall and applying more towards planting is um, you get into a, a, a harder burn down situation, but you put your residual on closer to the time of planting when you really need it. And so that's where that sp split spring approach, approach can work in some of those fields. Again, keep in mind if you've done a fall application, you're coming into spring with really no mare's tail, you have much more flexibility in what you can do there. But there's some interesting things I think to see uh, in these plots. So the first sequence of treatments are the early April or 30 day pre-plant treatments. And what you can generally see on these is burn down was good. These were all applied with glyphosate 2,4-D. So burn down was good. Um, it's difficult to find a plot in here that's holding all the mare's tail from a residual standpoint. Uh, and I'm standing here on June 12th making this video. So these herbicides have been out here basically about two and a half months, right? So this first plot I'm standing in is Valor XLT. Um, and you can see a few small mare's tail in here. It's actually holding relatively well. This is not, uh, we have some ALS issues on the farm here, but um, some ALS resistance issues, but most of our mare's tail is not completely ALS resistant. So we're still getting some help from the Kremlin and the Valor XLT. And it's actually a reasonably good looking plot, except that there are some mare's tail there that if the beans don't shade those out, um, you know, they're gonna come through and cause a problem. Again, keep in mind that you know, an ALS resistant population, what you're gonna see with this herbicide is something more like these next two plots where we just have the Valor. So we just have Valor at two ounces and three ounces. Um, and again, the control's actually reasonably good considering how long they've been out here, but um, there are some, some mare's tail that are getting a little bit of size to them here. Um, there's a relatively good sized mare's tail right there. And there's a few more through the plot. So in terms of um, where the beans are and where the mare's tail are, we're gonna have some control issues here. Um, you know, those mares tail are not going to be controlled by the post-emergence roundup. So that's the low rate of valor. Um, this is the higher rate of valor, which actually there's not a lot of difference as you look down through the plot. Um, you see enough mares tail in there that's basically not holding to the level that we'd like. So don't keep in mind that about this time when we're getting ready to put on our post-glyphosate, we really don't want to see any mares tail because the post-glyphosate is really not going to take those out. So these next two plots are Metribuse in that 8 and 12 ounces. And what's a little bit interesting is last year, in 2012, the early applications, actually almost anything we did with Valor by itself or the Sulfentrazone, the Authority by itself, just really did not hold at all. It was, it was not good control. And the Metribuse looked very good regardless of what we did with it. And, you know, this is the reason we do studies over different environments and over different years, because we're coming in here this year, and this is the Metribuse in at 8 ounces, and then the 12 ounces is right 
uh, next to me and there's lots and lots of mare's tail in here. So obviously we have different environmental conditions from year to year that uh, are affecting you know, which of these residual herbicides really looks best in their performance. So you can see the Metribuzin early um, really did not hold here. Even at 12 ounces, uh, it didn't hold. There's a lot of mare's tail in here. Um, so uh, again, we know Metribuzin has some advantages from burn down that we'll see a little bit later in the plot, but applied this early, um, regardless of what we saw last year, this year it looks like that would not hold. These next two plots are Sulfentrazone or Authority at a couple different rates, and you can see lots of mare's tail in here, so it's basically the same story with the Metribuz. And so the Valor under these conditions looking a little bit stronger than the other two, which is a little bit different uh, than we saw last. So now we get into the seven day pre-plan application. So our issue is we have some bigger mare's tail to burn down. Again, these still went with glyphosate 2,4-D, but we're putting a residual on closer to planting. So you start to see some different types of plants in the plot. So again, this is Valor XLT. Um, at the full rate, and you can see the residual control is generally pretty good. There's a few small plants coming through here, but what we have is some larger plants that definitely escape the burn down, um, so that's not acceptable control. Uh, so this gets even more severe when we look at the Valor by itself and the, and the Sulfentra zone by itself, or the Authority by itself. You can see, um, regardless of rate, pretty much, uh, or anything else, you can see large plants that escape the burn down because we didn't have the help from the Clermuron. And again, you don't see a lot of really small plants, so there's some residual activity here, but if we don't do a decent job burning down the mare's tail from the start, then obviously that's a problem. So the straight sulfentra zone of the authority is a little bit different than the Valor. I have the two rates on either side of me, and you don't really see plants that survive burn down very much for whatever reason. We know that occasionally there's some antagonism with some of these herbicides with glyphosate and 2,4-D, so maybe that didn't uh, really show up here. There are, especially at the lower rate, a lot of new mare's tail coming in here. Um, actually, this plot over here, there's only a few mare's tail, so that looks uh, reasonably good. But there are enough in there that we would rate it, you know, less than 90% uh, mares, residual mare's tail control. So the other approach, again, that we took here was a split spring application, putting half the residual herbicide on with burn down um, 30 days ahead of planting, and then coming back uh, at planting essentially with a little more burn down with the rest of the residual herbicide. And last year when we did this, uh, the Metribuzin looked great, and nothing else really worked that well. At this site, we had a site up near Bucyrus where we had split applications of Valor XLT early plus late, and it looked great. Um, it looks better here. The split looks better here uh, for all these herbicides, so I think it's a viable approach, um, although we are seeing some variability from year to year if you don't do a fall application. So here's Valor XLT, a couple ounces applied early, and then a couple ounces applied late, so we have the advantage of being early enough to burn it down, and then splitting our residual and putting more on closer to planting so it's holding really well. Next to this is the Valor, which is basically the same story. Um, you don't see any large plants that escape burn down. You are starting to see, um, again, keep in mind this has been here a month and a half also, um, but splitting it, we are starting to see a few small mare's tail here um, coming through um, compared to the Valor XLT where we have the advantage of the Clemuron. Next is the Metribuzin. Um, which again looks good. It looked good as a split application last year, and it looks good as a split application this year. There are a couple plants in here. Um, nothing really that would cause that much trouble. A few, few less plants than we saw with a Valor. And then again, next to this is the split application of the Authority, which also looks good. So you see the advantage of if you haven't done a fall application and you need to come in early because you're worried you're not going to be able to burn the mare's tail down as it gets larger, you can see the benefits of the split application compared to applying very early where I showed control breaking and then control uh, closer to planting and saving it all and doing that. You start to see more issues with just trying to burn down plants depending on what you're applying. So these last two plots are just showing you the, the disadvantage of just waiting until you finally plant um, especially in a year when it's wet and planting gets delayed and trying to pull the trigger and doing everything and burn it all down and get some residual control. So this first plot is actually Liberty plus Metribuzin plus Fowler XLT applied when we planted. Um, it's basically not a bad plant plot given the, how late that was and how many big mare's tail were in here, but you can see we've got some fairly large mare's tail surviving that, right? So we have good residual control. There aren't really very many small plants, but the issue of waiting that late always is, you know, will I get the, you know, adequate burn down of the mare's tail plants that are already up? And then the final plot is just a sort of a control for us showing if I just do glyphosate 2,4-D at planting and don't have residual, you know, what are my issues? Um, and you can see there's a few plants in here uh, like these that obviously uh, survive the burn down. 
Um, so we have that issue, and then we have no residual to speak of, so um, we have a lot of small plants coming along. So it shows you, you know, this plot is nice to show you if you, you know, didn't use residual, sort of what the control in the population would be um, compared to the other plots that I've just shown you. So what's the bottom line uh, in this plot? When we look at last year's studies and this year's studies, um, there's several things that come out here. One, of course, just to reiterate, a fall application is your first line of defense against Maris tail because then when you come back in the spring, you don't have those plants that have overwintered, you have more flexibility, you can apply your burn down and residual later, closer to planting, and it's all just generally gonna work better. You don't have to worry as much about trying to burn down um, large plants that have overwintered. If you haven't done anything in the fall, I think our research over the past couple years shows if you pull the trigger in early April and apply all your residual herbicide, you're gonna have some variability in control. You're gonna have difficulty getting the control you need when you're out. Um, late May or early June when you're looking at uh, putting your post-emergence glyphosate on. Splitting that application, if you haven't done anything in the fall, I think our data show over a couple years, uh, splitting the application, some of the burn down and residual early and some when you finally plant is a good approach. Um, this year that looked good with pretty much anything we did here with, with any of these herbicides, Metribuzin, Valor, Spartan, uh, or Valor XLT. Last year that looked good with Metribuzin and didn't look good with the rest for whatever reason. Um, and then the other thing here is as we get closer to planting, um, uh, in this particular plot this year, the Metribuzin, the Valor plot early outperformed the Metribuzin and the Spartan, but as we got closer to planting, um, the Metribuzin outperformed the, the uh, Sulfentrazone and the Valor because we got the help from the Metribuzin at that time to burn down the mare's tail. And also it's a fairly short-lived herbicide, but applying it closer to planting does maximize its residual.